So today I'm going to show you a code to solve the one-dimensional heat equation in C++. So uh, if you're here, it's probably it's likely that you're taking a numerical methods course, or you're just learning how to program, or you need to learn more about a numerical solution of, of, of differential equations. But in any case, you probably know the theory, so I'm not going to uh, waste a lot of time talking to you about theory or anything about that because your professor already probably already talked about that or you read about that yourself in a book. But basically what we're doing is we're solving the one dimensional heat equation in a domain like this. So this domain it should be discretized in a grid so you have grid points inside here. So you're gonna have some grid points inside here and our objective is to solve this uh, one dimensional heat equation which is a partial differential equation in each of these nodes so you probably already know about finite differences you probably already know about Taylor series expansion I'm not going to talk about any of that our interest is mainly about the code but to understand the code, you have to understand that this equation, it, it will be solved in time, in this direction. So you have an increase in time, you have time equals zero, and you have a final time here, t, here at the end of the simulation. And you have a domain here, x, a direction x, where you have the nodes in this direction. At t equals zero, you have an initial condition. So what we do is we fix the values of, te of temperature here on those nodes, the nodes where t equals zero. So the form that the discretization is done, you, you can do u of, what I did was u of j and i, where this is time, and this is space. So if I fix this at u at x equals zero, so I'm going to have the values of the initial conditions. Some books you're going to see a fixed value like 0.51. Some books will, will use a sine function. So the temperature at the, this initial condition will be something like this. The advantage of using the sine function is that you have an easy analytical solution to com to compare your results and you're gonna have boundary conditions which is the conditions on both sides here again uh, in this time of type of simulation here you could set zero here or you could set any value so it doesn't matter uh, I'm gonna show you the solution using an explicit method on an explicit method you have an explicit little equation to solve for each node you don't need to uh, multiply matrices or, or, or any mat matrix solution or anything like that. The, the, the computation is done iteratively in the, by the procedure. So it's pretty simple. It's used for education purposes. It's not really used in real applications because the explicit method is unstable. You usually need implicit methods in which you're going to need to find a way of solving the matrix that will result and you can use like crank nicholson or, or other types of numerical methods. So the, the explicit method, it's pretty simple. We're going to solve this in X and in T with a discretization like this. Here's the code. So it's a fairly simple code. I, I wrote it in, in C++. I consulted several sources to make it work right, but you can consult any book on numerical methods, it's going to have an example of this, this type of code. Uh, here you have the libraries or that you need to solve this, the, the standard libraries, the math functions here, and I need a function here. The, this, those other functions, I use it for the color coding or for the, the rounding of, of of the numbers at the, the final result. So it's a pretty simple code, like I was telling you, around 120 lines. 
So let me explain to you what this code does. So this is the main function. I don't have any macros here or any functions alter, uh, on, on outside functions that run here. It's all run under this main function here. This defines the simulation parameters. So dx and d tau, if we look here at the domain here, this here will be dx and this here will be d tau. So this is the discretization in time and uh, in space. This is the maximum time and this is the length of the side in x. So the simulation will run from 0 to the t max and from 0 to l which is the length of in, the length in x okay so this is the number of x steps or x intervals and this is the number of time intervals so it's the length divided by the 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 interval same here the total time divided by the interval plus 1 this is just so we can have the, the right number of grid points. Int ij, this is just for the, the iterations for the four loops. This defines the, the domain. It's a matrix here or a grid, grid in u, in tau, and x. I usually do this I initialize the array with zeros, but I don't know, really know if it's if this is always needed. Uh, C and C++ do some weird things with that sometimes. Sometimes I have a sum, a residual sum that goes into the loops. And so I, I rather do this just for, for security. Here we're going to define the initial condition. So the initial conditions, in, this is sine, the sine function of i dx, dx interval over L. This is what I, was, what I was telling you in this drawing here. This would be the initial condition, would be a function of this form. And the boundary conditions here, we'll just choose zero. I put those values here because I was testing different values. On, the, on this book that I was consulting, he presented a, a, a Fortran 77 code and he was using 0.5 here, fixed condition at, as at 0.5 here. So this is the boundary conditions, j is time again, at 0, at nx minus 1. I'm using an x minus 1 because I fixed here at nx the total time of steps plus 1, so you can have the dimensions right. So this here is the explicit solution. So it's pretty simple. It's a loop in j in time nx, and it updates to each step time plus 1, this function here. So lambda here is a function of, it's a parameter here of the heat equation, which is the d tau over dx squared. You can mess with all of this. There's a point here where, where the solution might become unstable depending on the value of this. So this solves the equation. This part of the code here is just a color code because I wanted to see a terminal plot. So... I, I color coded for the, the va inter values of in uh, intervals of values here from 0 to 1. If you use values here on the boundary conditions greater than 1, you have to update these values here. So if uh, the value is less or equal than 1 and greater than 0.9, 9, 9, it will print a red star and so forth until from zero until one. So this is just a color code, something pretty simple. If you're using Windows or if you're using other, other uh, programming suites or something like that, you might need something different here for this code. This works on Linux, worked on, I'm, I'm currently using Ubuntu or Debian in some other computers, so it works on Linux. For Windows, you need a different uh, form of, of, you need a different function here for, for color coding. So this here is the explicit solution in one dimension. 
based on this color coding here. So I'm just uh, updating the loops here. The, the information with the symbols here and the colors was done based on this loop here, on, the, on these conditions here. And now what I'm asking you to do here is printing this solution. So let me just comment the rest of the code here so I can explain to you what's going to happen. So I'm going to save here and I'm going to run here. So let me just clear this here, run it again. So this is what, what we have. We have a terminal plot with colors and I set it so the times will be printed on the side here. So you can see that those color intervals, they give it gives you the, the magnitude here of the temperature from 0 to 1 at each time. So you can use to check your code or to see if everything is okay. So we started here with a sine function at time equals 0 and it's fixed at 1 here on both sides and in the end the system will gradually evolve to 1. Okay, so it's, I thought it was a pretty cool way of showing this. So let's get back to the code. Now this step here I used to generate data which I used to just to check the data, just check the plot uh, using data uh, in, in new plot. You can easily program here so you can print the, that, that file so you can automatically plot in GNU plot. I, I didn't do that. I have that the, this done in other codes that I wrote, in other programs that I wrote, but uh, I didn't do, do it in this one because I, I, I wanted a, a simple simpler program. So this here, I, I'm just outputting the solution up to time equals five. So let's run this again. Let's save here. And let's run this again. So this is in the format to be read in GNU plot. We have a line here between each time. So these are the times. You can copy and paste in a, in a TXT or that file, fold, uh, that file, and then you can open on GNU plot. So I printed this for more time steps, and I saved it here. Saved here in this heat on the explicit font dot that. And now here in the terminal, in, in, in I already have new plot installed. What I did here is let me just exit here, show you guys. So I'm here. I'm in the folder where I have the that file saved. I'm gonna call new plot. And then I'm going to call this function as plot, which is a surface plot for the file heat explicit dot that. So this is the solution in time. So time equals zero. This is for all times up to 50. So you can see that uh, it solves, solves the equation correctly and gives you a nice plot. If you want to change the boundary conditions. I'm not going to redo the, the plot in the new plot, but I'm going to do it just in the, in the terminal plot. But you can, for example, use the boundary conditions of the book that I listed here, which was one here in the, which was zero here instead of sign. So I'm going to comment here. I put 0.0, .0 here. And I'm going to put one in each side. So you can run this here. And you can see the same thing here. The evolution in time starting with, I have one in each side. And I started with zero here in the initial condition. So it evolves on a similar way. This is the solution to the 1D heat equation. So it's pretty, it's, it, it's, it's pretty simple overall. You have a lot of small details that you can get it wrong. Some, 
some programming language starts with zero, others start with one. This can give you a lot of, 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 of headache when dealing with those uh, loops and those functions. So it's pretty simple and you can use it, you can adapt it to other programming language languages. I am probably go, I probably gonna do that in, in Python and uh, let's see how it goes. I might just publish that over the coming weeks or months.